Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for the Grinch-less riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. As we've mentioned previously on this show, the term gaslighting does not just mean someone is lying. Gaslighting is when the liar is trying to make you think that you're crazy. They do this by lying about objectively true facts everyone can plainly see. For example, a prime minister saying repeatedly that they're not banning hunting rifles, even when they propose to ban rifles, referencing hunting in the name of the firearm. For nearly a month, the Liberals tried to gaslight Canadians. It didn't work. Canadians are not being fooled, will not be lied to. So now, the Liberals have decided to pretend as if they never said their ban was not targeting hunting rifles. The new line is some hunting rifles will need to be banned because according to firearms expert Justin Trudeau, these firearms are, quote, too dangerous in other contexts, end quote. Every licensed firearms owner learns that firearms must be handled safely in all contexts. And it's shameful that as someone as ignorant about firearms as Trudeau is able to set policy. On Sunday, Minister Mendicino confirmed all rifles and shotguns being prohibited by Bill C-21 will be part of the largest property seizure in Canadian history. Remember, it was going to cost over a billion dollars when it was just the 15 models originally prohibited by the May 2020 order in council. Now the costs will be even more. Most Canadians have no idea how, how many of their tax dollars will be wasted. Every one of these legal firearms is safely stored in a gun safe. Fundamentally, they present almost no danger to public safety, yet billions will be wasted. Every single dollar spent confiscating firearms from lawful owners is a dollar that won't be spent preventing gang violence. Since the start of the school year, four teenagers have been murdered in Toronto. One 15-year-old child was murdered by a 13-year-old child. The entire agenda of banning so-called assault-style firearms is being driven by a small group of radical anti-firearm extremists. One of the anti-firearm activists even admitted this amendment was promised to them as a condition for their participation in a press conference announcing the legislation. The lobbyists, the liberals, and their paid-off media lackeys all work together to push out a steady stream of lies about firearms. It's up to each and every one of us to counter their lies. When it comes to the Trudeau liberals, countering the lies can feel like a full-time job. This week, the Minister of Veterans Affairs and Conservatives were, uh, said Conservatives were lying about Veterans Affairs Department offering to help veterans kill themselves. This was the same minister who apologized to Canadians two weeks ago for the Veterans Affairs Department offering to help kill veterans themselves. This is the same department which announced on Monday the individual responsible had been fired. This is the same minister who said he called the RCMP in to investigate an employee encouraging veterans to seek out assisted suicide. This isn't an isolated incident. The Liberals fully embrace the culture of death. It's how we ended up with a justice minister who thinks suicide is a right. This is how we ended up with a health department funding a children's guide to assisted suicide. This is how we ended up with pediatricians calling for the euthanization of babies. When it comes to Liberals and the lies they tell, Nothing is more damaging to Canada than the climate lies. There is no climate emergency. There is no climate crisis. 
The government and the media want Canadians to be afraid and filled with anxiety. When people are afraid, they're willing to accept extremist government policies they wouldn't otherwise support. This week, the environment minister leaked his plans to introduce regulations to launch a Soviet-style electric vehicle mandate. EV is short for electric vehicle. The government will mandate that 20% of cars and light-duty trucks sold will be electric by 2025. Now, the only way to achieve this mandate is for car dealers to artificially increase the price of more affordable gas-powered vehicles. The car market's already experiencing supply chain troubles. Custom computer chips for cars are in very short supply. Companies such as Tesla can't keep up with the current demand for EVs. Once Trudeau's Soviet-style EV mandate's in place, there will be chaos. Rising interest rates, combined with aggressive car loan companies, may create a huge supply in repossessed cars. A glut of used cars and a Soviet-style mandate forcing up the price of new cars could put a lot of dealers out of business. A recent article in the CBC suggests the real agenda is not to force people to buy electric vehicles, but to force people onto public transit. Socialists hate the freedom a car represents. They want Canadians dependent on government. During the same interview, Trudeau admitted he plans to ban hunting rifles. He was also asked about ethics. Setting aside his use of a vulgarity to describe his minister breaking the law, Trudeau invoked the worst possible defense his government's, in, for his government's ethical uh, lapses. Trudeau said, quote, when you do lots of things, every now and then people are going to make mistakes, end quote. This is an ends justifying the means defense, and it's morally abhorrent. First of all, the minister did not make a mistake. She broke the law. She didn't accidentally give a contract to a close personal friend. She did it on purpose. She did it with intention. She said the ends justified her corruption. In the end, she was just following the example set by Trudeau. At the center of Trudeau's lies and corruption are his set of laws to control the internet. Bill C-11, the Online Streaming Censorship Act, and Bill C-18, the Online News, Tax, and Welfare Act, are built on lies. The biggest lie about both these bills is that the federal government has the right to even make these laws. Video streaming services, social media companies, and the news media are not federally regulated industries. Justin Trudeau and his paid-off media allies don't want Canadians to know these bills are blatantly unconstitutional. No government has the right under the Charter to regulate how Canadians express themselves, but the Liberal government is only allowed to make laws in specific areas of jurisdictions spelled out in the Constitution. There were no social media companies when Canada was founded in 1867, but the fathers of Confederation were not stupid. That's why they wrote in the Constitution that any issues not covered by the Constitution are left to the provinces. So how are the Liberals justifying this unconstitutional legislation? Simple. The federal government has jurisdiction over broadcasting. The problem is that streaming services are the exact opposite of broadcasting. So the Liberals exaggerated the definition of broadcasting until it included broadcasting and the opposite of broadcasting. Sound familiar? The Liberals exaggerated the definition of national security at the threat until it included bouncy castles as being threatening. The Liberals exaggerated the definition of assault style from scary-looking firearms to include hunting rifles. 
the liberals exaggerated the definition of ethics to mean anything a liberal does is ethical. This is gaslighting on a national scale. Words become meaningless. Definitions are reinvented to mean the opposite. Everything becomes just a contest for power. And if you question any of it, government-funded activists like the Anti-Canadian Hate Network will target you for cancellation. These are just a few examples of how the liberals and the left are trying to exert control over your life. If you have any examples, let me know in the comments below. At times like this, it can be challenging staying merry at Christmas. Everything feels broken. You can't get a passport. Parents can't buy children's Tylenol. And food prices are soaring. But remember, it's always darkest before the dawn. That's why we celebrate the birth of Christ during the longest coldest nights of the year. From now until June, every day will get a little bit brighter. This year, our party elected a new leader with more first ballot support than even Stephen Harper got. Canadians are tired of Trudeau. Trudeau's days as prime minister are numbered. Even as cabinet ministers are texting each other with talk about leadership challenges from Catherine McKenna and Mark Carney, in the end, it doesn't matter who the Liberals replace Trudeau with. Canadians are sick of Liberals playing wedge politics. They're sick of this overspending and underperforming government. When the next election comes, I believe Canadians will replace these gaslighters with a party committed to accountability and integrity. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.